Bonjour Genie Engineers, welcome to my problem a day series. In this video, we're going to calculate the future word giving the present word. Now, if you're for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's get started. Okay guys, so before we start, I just want to say this problem is actually really easy and I did get something similar on my FE exam, but I also did get harder questions, which I will cover later in the future. Now, I know a lot of students did not take this class in college and so that's why I wanted to cover the basics so that we are all on the same page. Also, for those of you who didn't take the class in college and still struggling with the material, I definitely recommend that you get a book for just this topic. I will leave the link in the description below for the book that I use, which tremendously helps me and I definitely recommend it. So the question says, if you deposit $5,000 today with an interest rate of 8%, we want to know what is the value of that $5,000 that you deposit today in 10 years. So when you see these type of problems, the first thing you should do is do the cash flow diagram. So if you haven't heard of that yet, don't worry, we're, gonna, we're going to go over it here. That cash flow diagram, it's pretty much like free body diagram in statics and strength of materials. Okay, so the cash flow diagram usually represent two terms. So we have the inflow and the outflow. So the outflow is pretty much anything that you get out of your pocket, like um, costs, repair, maintenance, uh, expenses, taxes, disbursement. These are all outflow and usually they have a negative sign. Now, inflow is anything that you make, let's say savings or receipts, uh, we have revenues. These are all inflows and usually they have a positive sign. So if you deposit $5,000 now, this is going to, it's a deposit, so it's an outflow. And usually outflows, we put an arrow down and inflows is arrow up. So today, which is zero, we're going to deposit $5,000. Now, in 10 years, it's one, two, in 10 years, we want to know what is the value of that $5,000. So that's going to be an inflow. So that's, and we want to know what this value is. Um, and the interest rate is 8%. So this is what your cash flow diagram should look like. So to calculate for the future worth, we're going to go to page 135 on the reference manual and we're going to look at the equation. So here we have convert to F given P. That's exactly what we need because we want to convert to the future worth given the present worth. And here, as you guys can see, we have two equations and they're actually the same thing. If you use this one or this one, you will get the same answer. Now, the only problem is on the test, if let's say you were given uh, this one, convert to P given the annual worth, it's going to take you a lot of time if you use this equation versus this one. Now, be careful, you should be able to know how to use both because on the test, if you weren't given the interest rate that's on the tables, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, then you're in trouble. Then you have to use this for these formulas. So make sure you just know how to use both. On here, I'm going to show you both equations just so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's write the equation. So let's solve this one first and then we use this equation. So we have F is equal to, so present worth times F over P. We have the I, which is interest rate, and then we have N, which is number of years. Now, don't forget this term. I know it's not given to you here, but you always have to so the way I do it, or the way I remember it, whatever this value you have here, that value has to always be here as well, because then you have to cancel and then you get the future. So that's a good method to remember that. So let's replace P with 5,000. Let's leave F to P for now. I is 8%. And then N is 10 years. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the tables. So let me show you the tables. They're on page 138. Now, this table right here, as you can see, it's give, you're given the interest rate, which is 0.5%. We actually need the 8%. So we're going to keep going. So that's 8%. Number of years, it's 10. And you, as you can see, you're given all the terms here. So that's what I was talking about earlier. 
So we're looking for f to p. So f to p is here, and n is 10, and so the value is 2.1589. So let's do 5,000 times 2.1589. Now, if you plug in this in your calculator, you will get an answer of 10,795, and that's answer A. If you look at the multiple choice, already, like, just given this, you know that the future worth it's not going to be less than 5,000. So you already know that this can be the answer and this can be the answer because it's just, you can't lose money. You're actually going to be making money uh, on the future. Now, the only thing is, it's going to be either 10,000 or 13,000. Now, 13,000 sounds a little bit too high, but then again, you never know. So I would recommend that you just solve it on the exam. So that's just a way to keep in mind of these things on the test. So in case you forgot or you got stuck, at least you will be able to eliminate a couple answers. Okay, so let's now use the second equation. Now let's go to back to our page, 135. And then, so here we have, okay, so let's write it down. Let's do a different color this time. Let's do green. So I have F is equal to P times 1 plus I to the N. P is 5,000. 1 plus I, so I is 8%, but make sure you divide it by 100. Now N is 10. So the answer is very close. So it's 10,700. 95. It's very close to uh, this one. This one actually in the calculator, it was 10,794.6. And then this one was like 10,794.5. So as you can see, they're very close uh, and they should be. So if not, then there's something wrong. But, but yeah, that's uh, like I said, it's very easy, straightforward uh, problem. We will, however, on the future, cover a little bit more harder problems on this. Okay, guys, so I hope you understood that problem. Now, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below, and I will make sure to address it in the future. Now, remember that the majority of the questions I go over here, it is because people have asked me to solve them in the past. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon. À la prochaine.